here. Not just Zone 9, but like here, like South Louisiana, Acadiana, where we are. It's, it's so different. And you can't learn it in a book and you can't learn it um, from reading a blog and you can't, you just, it's, it's just so specific. And I know a lot of people think that about their gardening zone or where they're trying to do things. And they're probably right, mm -hmm. which is why we need community. So what are your thoughts on community? Because I've been getting so many questions um, about how to start a community, I guess more specifically a homesteading community or mm -hmm. gardening type of community or homemaking or homeschooling, things like that. For me, it started when um, I got pregnant, had my first baby, and I realized how alone I was. I didn't have family here, um, and that had a lot to do with it, but just friends. Um, you know, I had no one to drop off meals if I wasn't feeling well enough to cook or if I was tired, and um, no one to even talk about my birth with. I had had a home birth. I was the only person that I knew. Well, I knew one other woman that had a home birth at that time. I just didn't really have anyone to process any of it with, and it just felt so wrong. It just felt not right. Like isolating? Yes. Mm -hmm. So, I thought, okay, well, if I want to meet more people, um, you know, that were like-minded, um, where would I even start with that? And the only thing I could think of was my midwife. I thought, well, if she's doing homeworks and she's, you know, meeting other people who live sort of similarly, mm -hmm. then maybe I should reach out to her. So she was actually my midwife apprentice at the time. She wasn't my midwife, but she was young. Um, and so we went and had lunch. And I think I kind of expressed some of that to her. And um, and then I, do, I really don't know where it went from there or how it happened. Like, I can't remember if she introduced me to people or what. But I know that through her and through that intention of me, you know, getting to know her better so that I could get to know other people, um, other home birthing moms better, it somehow happened. So, um, like, I can't remember if... You know, we had play dates, or if we, she invited people to her house, invited me at the same time, but regardless, we met a few more people that way. Um, and then I started to form, and at that time I thought that I wanted to sell things that we had, like um, eggs and meat, pork, things like that. So I thought, hey, well, I'll just start an Instagram account because I don't have Facebook, I'm not really into Facebook. But I figured if I started an Instagram account, um, I could, you know, get some local people to kind of be aware of what we were doing so that we could get some customers. And that worked. Met a few more people that way. Um, and I just started going to, I don't know really how to describe, describe it, but like related events. Um, so like there was this mushroom inoculation workshop that someone was hosting. So I went to that and of course met people interested in inoculating mushrooms. Yeah. You know? Um, which is a certain type of people. The type of people that I was trying to meet. And I made sure to talk to everyone that I could that was there, tell them what we were up to, what we were trying to do. Um, you know, made lots of connections that way through those parts of the event. And then I just went to things like um, toddler time at the library, tried to connect with some other moms, you know, because if they're at toddler time at the library, then you're there with a bunch of other stay-at-home moms. Um, and we would just 
I would just try to keep in touch with as many people as possible. Um, and that's kind of, I think, the, I don't want to say the hard part, but it's the part that's kind of not natural to us anymore. When we meet people and we have a connection, then it's easy to get caught up in our own lives, doing our own thing, to not reach out to those people, to try to meet in person again. And it's not because we don't want to, it's just our lives get so busy. But I was very intentional about making sure that I kept in touch with all these people because I knew that if I didn't then it just wouldn't happen you know so so now we're like you know farming homestead and doing the thing we're more self-reliant but one of the things about becoming self-reliant is that you realize that you need people more than ever mm -hmm. and you don't really want to be 100% completely self-sufficient or we don't anyway um, because that's just not sustainable it's just not gonna work so then I thought okay we're doing this I know there's other people in our community that are doing this um, but I wish there was just some way that we could all kind of get together and talk about what's going on what we're doing maybe share a little bit I'm not great at growing tomatoes because of a pest problem but I've got milk who wants to trade some tomatoes for milk or something like that um, and I just went back and forth for a while like how can I make this happen how can this work and it wasn't until 2020 happened I think what people needed um, to kind of realize hey the stores might not always have stuff for us um, maybe we should start meeting people that you know we can work together and if things aren't always available at the push of a button, then at least we'll have options. Okay, so here we are 2020. I think it was around October when I was talking to a friend and we were, we were um, just saying, you know, like, it's time. People are ready. I think this could work now. <laughs> so we just kind of put it out there um, on Instagram, and I think she maybe put something on Facebook, and I think she found other groups on Facebook. Like, there was a group called um, Homesteaders of Acadiana or something like that. Um, so different related groups. Um, promoted it that way and through word of mouth, and we just told as many people as we could. Um, I went through my phone contact list, you know, and invited as many people as I could think of. Um, and then, and we did it and we just called it um, a gathering. Mm -hmm. But gosh, that first time, I might be exaggerating, but I wanna say there were 50 people or more than that. Um, lots of kids running around everywhere. I told people that I was gonna bring my baby cow to entice people to come. <laughs> So we had our little baby cow on a leash um, for all the kids to play with. And and so we just kind of, you know, we just met each other and, and talked about, hey, what do, you, what do you like? What do you have going on at home? Oh, I want some more cows or I would like to get into pigs. Does anybody have pigs? Does anybody else have stink bug problems on their tomatoes? And we're all, mm -hmm. yes, you know. <laughs> um, some people were there, had never done anything before, but they were just interested in and that was wonderful um, because they were thinking they had to follow the directions on the back of the seed packets and we were like, no way, nah. <laughs> not even close. Um, so yeah, many, many great connections were formed that day. It was a Saturday morning at eight o'clock in October and so many people showed up. We were so excited. We got everyone's email addresses and phone numbers and if they had Instagram names, they put that next to it. Um, and and then we had a seed swap the next time. I think that one was also like a plant swap and a seed swap. But then we had just a seed swap um, several months after that. That went really well. Maybe we even had two or three seed swaps. I can't remember. Um, nothing formal. Just bring what you have. Put it out on the table. Everyone kind of go through it and share it. Um, talk about how you grow this or that. We invited people to come even if they didn't have any seeds or plants because that's fine you know mm -hmm. um everyone leaves with something and then what was the next thing and then we kind of started 
um, I, I wanted to find a way to be able to teach people how to do things, but not in a, I didn't want to charge for it because, I don't know, I just kind of feel like when you start to charge for things, um, it's just, it's, it's just not the same message. Um, and I know, I know a lot of people have to get paid These are big for, enough? Yes. Just pick anything because these plants are not doing well. Okay. Everything has to come off. The plants are not doing well because it's new soil mm -hmm. and it's not completely composted. Um, I think people need to get paid for their time. Um, I agree with that, but um, I don't want to, I just don't want to charge for the, for the knowledge and the skills, the wisdom that we should have never really forgotten. And it's just that, so that it just so happened that it skipped some generations, you know? Um, this is not something that people should have to pay for. And I kind of wanted to do things that I wish were available when I first started. I know I certainly wasn't going to pay for a class on canning and a class on keeping cows and a class on raising pigs and a class on, you know, I just, I, I just wasn't in a position to do that. And I don't feel like most people are. Especially when you're trying to build out a homestead and you especially. think you need all the things. Right, especially. So, um... So the classes are a great way, and so I do them at the library, and I'm able to offer them for free there. Um, I didn't want to do classes at my house just because, you know, it's my home. It's my children's home. It's just not a place where I want to have a lot of people come. Mm -hmm. um, but the library's perfect. It's safe. Our library's really nice. Um, and really, that's kind of my way to get people to come and, and meet them, you know, meet mm. them face to face. It's like, hey, yeah, we'll talk about dairy cows, but also I just really want to meet you. And, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, mm. um, and it's great. And then um, how did we meet? Through Instagram? Through a homeschool play date. Yes, mm. homeschool play date. I had said, yeah. yeah, I had put out like, hey, we're getting together. Let's do a play date. Uh, message me for the details. Mm -hmm. Of course, I don't ever put, this is where I'm going to be at this time right. on Instagram. Um, so, yeah. Met you through a play date, and I had been telling my friends before that, I can come up with the ideas, and, you know, I have lots of them, but I'm not the person to really get it done. I have so much going on here. <clears throat> I'm tending to my family first have small children mm -hmm. um, that need me a lot, have this homestead that needs me a lot, my garden, everything, um, but I know there's somebody out there that's going to be passionate about this like I am, um, but has the, the reach to the community already and can just do the things that I can't, and um, and I was just waiting for that person to come along and then you messaged <laughs> me and we met and I want to say it was the second time we got together that I was like, you are the person I've been looking for. <laughs> you are her. <laughs> I hope you're ready for this. <laughs> you are her. Um, and then so you started having, um, you have your business. That's perfect. It's got lots of parking. It's got a bathroom. Mm -hmm. It's got a garden, um, a demonstration garden out there already for people to see, and you've had how many events there? Four. Four. In mm -hmm. how many months? <laughs> in three months? In five months. Five months. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that has been fantastic. And for me, I had been, when I started gardening, I was new to the state, was new to everything and the few friends that I had nobody garden right. and so I was like okay people at the gym I didn't know anybody gardening and I had a when I started gardening I, Hosea was like eight months old nine months old and so I was like look to YouTube because that's what everybody does when you start something and you don't know people and everyone I couldn't find anybody local and it was like Arkansas and California and I really resonated with Jess I was like we would be friends and so I followed her and then I followed a lady in California and I just remember thinking like there has to be somebody here doing it and the only things I saw were garden tours everybody wants to like show their garden and nobody t 
teaches. And so that's originally how I found you. I was just so determined to find someone local that I was like, I'm gonna get on Instagram and search Louisiana Gardener, that hashtag, until I find somebody. And a bunch of people used it, but no one consistently. And you probably had like 10 posts that had used it. And so I was like, really? Yeah. Like I didn't find a ton, but the, the oh. stuff I found was like- Or like zone nine gardening or- See, I didn't even know what that was no. then. Like. Okay. Like I had, I was so green to gardening that I was like, just wanted like someone in Louisiana. Yeah. And so I followed you and I followed Kelly from, um, Wild Child Farms and, but even still it was like, it was like Instagram posts, but there wasn't a ton of like information and it was very like, here I am gardening at my house, like with my baby and then I go to work and then I come home and like there was no body and so when at our business we didn't have the space originally we were in a strip mall area and we didn't have any space so when we bought the land I was like we have you know we had room and so we put the garden in in 2020 primarily because our members didn't have a place to go like people that were in apartments were like they would walk around in the parking lot and they'd be like get back on your balcony and I'm like they're children, you know, like what do these people do? And so we, one of our members does woodworking. We had him make a big swing. We put it underneath the live oak tree. We put in the cinder block beds and um, Jarrett from Youngland Designs gave me three beds and I had some containers he gave me and we started the garden. That was just a place that people could come. It was like, if you can't go anywhere else, if the park doesn't let you come to the property and there's something there. And it was the first time that I ever got to be in a garden with another person outside of my family. And there's a lot more people on YouTube. There's a lot more information. There's a lot more people on Instagram doing this kind of thing now than there was when I started about 10 years ago. Um, so I didn't really have, um, you know, I just had to jump in and do it, which is fine. That's how I like doing things anyway. Um, so... So my advice when people want to know how to garden is I'm like, just grow a garden. Grow something. <laughs> yeah. But how? I don't know. Just start. You know, mm -hmm. that's, and that's not good advice. I know that. But, um, but what I'm trying to say is that here, not just zone nine, but like here, like South Louisiana, Acadiana, where we are, it's, it's so different and you can't learn it in a book and you can't learn it. Um, from reading a blog and you can't you just it's it's just so specific and I know a lot of people think that about their gardening zone or where they're trying to do things and they're probably right mm -hmm. which is why we need community right you know it's great to follow Shay Elliott you know I, I learned so much from her but mm -hmm. she's not here right and so so not everything is going to apply and I can do things the way she does it and totally fail, mm -hmm. you know? So when you're just starting out, you don't know. Mm -hmm. You don't know what's, what's what you be don't there. know. You don't know what exactly. you don't know. Yes. Yeah. So, so that's another reason that I like to do the classes um, is because I want the people here to have someone here that's done it here. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, it's just so valuable. You know, I, I want to give people what I wish I had had right. back then. Exactly. You know? mm -hmm. I remember being at the seed swap, the very first one we had. And before I, like when we were hosting it, Aaron was like, you excited? I was like, I'm excited and terrified because I know there's going to be people come that know way more than I do. Yes. And there will be people that come that know nothing, but there'll be people that walk into my garden and are like, I've never seen that before. And if I've grown something they never have, then I have more experience as a gardener with that. Right. They have more experience as a gardener than I do in some, in the things that they've done. And so it, it almost like gardening is like a level playing field mm -hmm. where everybody can learn something from everybody. Right. And like we, we all sat there. I remember my first year I put lettuce seeds in and they didn't grow. And I was like, lettuce doesn't grow here. <laughs> and then I was, the I was thing. watching a video <laughs> and it was like, oh, lettuce doesn't go in the heat. Well, then why do I eat salads in the summer? Yep. Like, why do I eat salad in the summer if yep. that doesn't grow at this time? Okay, so that's a winter thing. Well, what I want to eat salad in the summer, which led me to sorrel. And I found it and my kids love it fresh. And that's 
that's like the gateway, like, like if chickens are the animal gateway, like sorrel is like the gateway thing at the gym. Everyone tries it like, oh, my kids don't eat greens. And I'm like, yeah, just try it. And then they try it and the kid's like, this is so good. And they're like, what? And, and I remember that first seed swap when maybe it was, I don't know if it was the first or second one when Gabrielle brought Egyptian spinach and was like, this grows in Arizona. And we were all like, we could grow that here. Like just, I would yeah. never have. Like, I've never seen Egyptian spinach in any of the books that I've looked at. Yeah. Or the seed yeah. swap calendars. Or those things. But there are things that she got that she was like, oh, this can grow here. And everyone learns and our gardens develop at a faster pace just by being together. Being together, right. And there's something so different about being together in person mm -hmm. uh, than Instagram or Facebook or YouTube. Right. Those are good ways to connect, but then you have to do the work of connecting in person and you have to do it often and you have to do it, um, you just, you just, you can't wait for it to happen. To happen. No, kitty cat. <laughs> you can't, um, you can't wait for it to happen. You have to be the person that's going to do it, even though you're not that person. I'm not that person, Charity. <laughs> I'm not that person, but I've told my friends and family, you know, I've said, I'll sacrifice myself. I'll be, you know, the idiot that doesn't really know what she's talking about, but pretends, <laughs> but pretends just to get people together and get something started, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and, and so speaking of that, oh, I'm praying at this. So speaking of that, um, when it comes to teaching the classes, which, you know, I hope that that's something people get from this video is to kind of like how to get a community started where they are. Mm. Um, so with teaching the classes, you don't have to know it all. You right. really don't. Um, of course, I'm not going to teach a class on keeping goats because I've never had goats. Right. But if you've had chickens for three years, you know a heck of a lot more than somebody who's never had chickens. Mm -hmm. And um, and what else? Did I, oh yeah. So. And, and about it being videoed, about it being Zoom, because our, our um, library classes are on Zoom. How do you say that? They're Zoomed? They're on Zoom? I guess they're on Zoom. <laughs> we Zoom. <laughs> we live stream. We live, stream. live stream? Is that yes. what you call it? Yes, they're live streamed on Zoom. I think yes. that's how you say it. So I'm kind of against that. I kind of don't like that, mm. you know, because... Mm. It's like a fallback to, I don't have to come. It is. Yeah. Um, but then there were some people that messaged me, hey, my baby's sick. Oh my gosh, I really wanted to go to this class. Right. Okay, that makes sense. And um, Or I'm going to be out of town, but I really want to watch it. Okay, that makes sense. Um, but I just kind of want to share my thoughts on live stream because people are going to want that. When you try to do this community thing and when you try to start, you know, all this, people are going to want it to be put out there for everyone. Mm -hmm. And so that's fine. As long as you can remember to encourage people, hey, this is about meeting. This right. is just a way for me to get you to come, you know, exactly. and like meet me. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I just mm -hmm. wanted to say that. Yeah. And it's, the other thing about meeting in person is, like, it's so wild to me that we had never met in a year plus before we ever met. I almost bought that property right there. Yes. Like, Came to look at yes. the neighbor's property. Like, came to look at the neighbor's property. And now I tell Aaron, I'm like, could you imagine if we did? Oh Stevie gosh. and I would have all the things. Oh like, there would be so many things. And he's like, but we love our property. And it's like, I do. But we would never know that if we never, like, met in person. Yeah, and, and another crazy story. So, I've been passing where you bought your property. Mm -hmm. I've been passing there for 11 years now. And every time we would pass, I would look in the back where these oak trees are and there was a bridge and you mm -hmm. kind of see what was back there and I always told my husband one day I'm going to find out what's back there yeah. on the other side of that bridge there's something back there mm -hmm. that I need to find out about and then I met you you said you bought the property I'm like is it behind that bridge yeah I knew it I knew I was going to mm -hmm. find it out one day yeah. yeah and it's for me like I I have always taken this attitude that like all someone can say is no yeah. right like that's all that somebody could say Right. So, like, do I have, am I blessed to have, like, the resources of space with my business and, um, and a parking lot and a bathroom and all those things? Yes. But 
had I never put the garden there because I thought people would be like, you've gardened for two years. Like, you have no business doing a demonstration garden. Like, what are you demonstrating? Ways to fail. <laughs> like, I'm demonstrating <laughs> things that don't work. And But for people that don't have those things, like me, mm -hmm. find someone right. that has Right, exactly. Things. Like, if you go somewhere and you see, like, like, I found you, and it's like, I'm sure thousands of people message her. I'm still going to do it. Like, because all you could say is no, but you were like, yeah, come to the play date. And now, it's, and you were looking for somebody with space. Like, if you see a business with space or somebody at the farmer's market, and you're like, hey, can I come help? Like, mm -hmm. hey, are you interested in just by asking the question, like, the door of possibilities becomes so vast. And now it feels so good to, like, be able to share the excitement of gardening because yes. we're entering into like this time that is the hardest part of gardening. Like yes. everything's oh full of gosh. bugs. It's so hot. Like the mosquitoes will come out and then nobody wants to be out. Cause this is the glorious time of when being in the garden and then the mosquitoes start coming and you're like, I'm gonna let it all die <laughs> because I don't want to go out there. And if you don't have somebody to call or to come pick beans with yes. or do whatever with, like your chances of quitting right. go up so right. significantly. I have a friend who lives in Baton Rouge who I met through all of this and um, she called me or maybe we were voice messaging, I don't remember, but anyway, uh, she called me last, what was it, August, mm -hmm. July or September, something like that. One of those super hot, miserable months. Mm -hmm. She was like, I just don't know what I'm supposed to be doing. I feel so useless. Feel like I should be doing something. I'm just like so antsy. What should I be doing? Like meeting with the garden. Right. I was like, oh, this is our time of rest. Yeah. You're fine. Don't do any. I was like, you know how those northern people don't do anything in December and January? This, this is, is our, our time. December, January. Yeah. And she felt so relieved. And she was like, okay, thank you. Because right. you know all these other people that she's seeing on Instagram and whatever, they're harvesting and they're canning and they're doing all these things. And it's like, we need to just chill for a minute because. Mm -hmm. Anything we're going to do is not going to work anyway. Right. <laughs> I said, I mean, everyone who knew me knew that I hated winter. It's like, mm -hmm. don't talk to me in the winter. Yeah. I'm so grouchy. Uh. I'm just miserable until I realized that we could grow throughout the winter, not only grow throughout the winter, but grow most of our food throughout mm -hmm. the winter here in zone nine. Changed everything. Mm -hmm. I love winter now. I went to all the thrift stores and bought all these beautiful vintage sweaters that I wear <laughs> all winter long. Yeah. And before that, I had no winter clothes. I wore sweatpants and sweatshirts because mm -hmm. right. I was just like, I'm going to be miserable anyway, so yeah. might as well look miserable. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. Um, mm -hmm. uh, like, I remember one time when we met, when you mentioned you didn't grow tomatoes, I thought, why not? Like, I love tomatoes. <laughs> and I had no idea, like, you live in a more rural area, and... I live closer to the city and I do deal with some like stink bug problems, but like they're manageable. Like I'll go out and squish them and we're good for the most part. I'm going to call you and on June 15th. Yeah. Come out here. Yeah. And come pinch squash and bugs. See, what's, see yeah. what's going on. And I never understood it until you said in the beginning of June, they spray all the fields around me and then all those bugs rush to my garden because I have an organic garden and it's like, huh, I would never know that had we mm -hmm. not spoken nor would I be able to tell the people that garden that I speak to at the gym when they're like, oh my gosh, there's all these stink bugs. I'm like, and that'll happen. You know, like yes. I don't experience that, but now I can say, do you live around yes. cane fields or? And you'll know that their, their experience with it might not be like yours. You might be able to pick right. yours off. There's not manageable. It's not happening. Yeah. It's not happening. Mm -hmm. um, and I also want to say that <clears throat> whenever you meet people like this, you talk a lot about how you want to grow all these crazy varieties and things that people don't have and everybody's going growing squash and cucumbers but you want to grow all these special things right and i love that and i do like to grow some crazy off the wall things but my main goal with this garden and with my homestead is to feed my family as much as possible right so what i want to know is from the 90 year old man what his family used to grow every single spring without fail because that's they what put the it. most food on the table. Mm -hmm. So those mm -hmm. are the kinds of things that I'm more interested in. Still, I like to grow the, like I said, I like to grow the fun ones, but mm -hmm. um, only if those fun ones are like super productive, well, productive. and yeah. can handle the humidity, can handle the heat, can handle the bugs, can mm -hmm. handle the, 
the the winter freezes or whatever it is um so so now that we have each other you know you're experimenting with all the crazies and you right. can say here's the crazies that work right and then once you have your larger garden set up at your farm and you're like okay cv mm -hmm. what's going to feed my family right. all year and i'm like exactly this, you know? or even for me like did i tell you that we're, we're set up with david and katie for yeah. the csa Oh, so you're gonna get this? Yeah. You're gonna get so, I didn't know they were offering one. No, no, no. They're going to at the gym. Oh. So they bought yes. a fridge. So at a seed swap. That's perfect. This couple comes and they have a farm and they're talking about the CSA. And I wanted to do the CSA in January and February. And I didn't because I never drive to Church Point. Like yeah. it's 40 something minutes from right. my house. And I'm never in town on Saturday. So I'm never at the farmer's market. Yeah. And I love when I get to go, but like. It, it's just so infrequent that it was like I would pay for this and right. never get the food. So, so your gym is going to be a drop drop off point yep. for the farm that's way out of town that yes. nobody can drive. That nobody to. can drive to. So they yes. ordered a fridge. The fridge will go in the lobby, and every Wednesday there'll be a drop off point for that's amazing. that. And so it's like I get to grow the exciting things because I'm also going to be be supporting them. Supporting them. Right. And so it's like, I didn't have the space. Like I said, I didn't have a big garden to be able to grow all the things. Right. So it's like every spring people are like, will you take this zucchini, please? I have so much zucchini. Like I can't eat it anymore. I'm going to die. Like, ah. Mm -hmm. And so I'm like, I will never grow zucchini because everyone <laughs> gives it to me. And so I'm like, what can I grow that would be different? So Rosell right. is one of those things for me. Nobody at the gym ever knows what Rosell is. And it's like, I'll grow all the Rosell to share in the winter time when people aren't getting a ton of stuff that they're sharing. Mm -hmm. And then in the spring when everyone's sharing, like it's like mm -hmm. this thing. And so now it's like, okay, I'm gonna be able to support their farm, which will give me more freedom to grow the things I want to. And then when I do have more space, like if they're growing those staple things, maybe I'm growing like ginger and turmeric and other things that I really, really wanna try that I don't see other people trying. And then I can share with them. Okay. So another thing about community, um, and why we need one. When I finally got to the point of growing a crop, um, you know, to feed my family for the year, so it was carrots. I finally got to the point of growing enough carrots to feed my family for the year because we can only grow them in a certain amount of time when it's cool. So I harvested all these carrots. I was so proud of myself that I'd finally done that um, because that's what I wanted to do with each crop. I wanted to do that with onions, and potatoes, and all this, but carrots were right. the first one. Got them all out the ground start washing them off, you know, taking the tops off, and I'm like five hours into this process of harvesting and doing what I'm doing, and I'm like, I haven't even made a dent in yeah. what there is left to do. Yeah. So, you know, my husband's helping. Um, I think maybe my mother-in-law was here that day. Um, the kids helped a little bit. Still, we didn't make a dent, you know, so I put them in the fridge. I had to rearrange everything in my extra fridge to make them fit in right. there mm -hmm. you know and then um next day went at it again this lasted for like seven days of me washing carrots peeling carrots chopping carrots because i was trying to can them mm -hmm. not all of them I, I i was like i'm gonna have to ferment some because i just can't mm -hmm. get to it um even some got wasted because i just couldn't get to it and the whole time i'm just complaining to my husband I'm like it shouldn't be this way <laughs> I should not have to do this by myself mm -hmm. you know this should be our family our our grandparents and our um our moms and dads and our aunts and uncles and our cousins and our children family and time. Mm -hmm. everybody should be together hey it's it's carrot day you know everybody right. come over and we should knock this out in in a Saturday yeah. you know or a weekend um you know, and there are still some families that do that with corn. You know, they'll mm -hmm. they'll all shuck corn and for us it was shelling peas. Shelling we would peas. have bag like tr huge trash bags of peas, and everyone would sit together and visit. And we would shell yes. peas. Yes, mm -hmm. and there's still a little bit of that here and there. Um, certainly not in our family, mm -hmm. sadly. But I'm gonna keep making babies. Yeah, and and we're gonna You'll grow the family to do it. Grow it. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so so. That was another real, like, um, once I realized I, I can't do this, even, even for my own family, I cannot do this alone. Um, and I realized that to be self-sufficient, you really have to be, what's the word? I don't know. Um, community sufficient. Does mm -hmm. that make sense? Like you, yeah. you need community. You can't right. just do, do this on your own. And so, um, yeah, I have dreams of like, you know, 
getting together with all these people once because I, I don't really think there's there are people that are growing large scale um, to sell at markets and things like that. Mm -hmm. I don't really know of another family yet who's growing, um, you know, large enough scale to like grow something to feed their family for the whole year. Right. But I know it's coming. Yeah. And people want to do it and they, mm -hmm. they'll get there. And then, you know, I have dreams of us having these days where we all just get together and, mm -hmm. and can our carrots or, um, you know, make mulberry jelly or persimmon leather, persimmon fruit leather. I mean, marmalade, orange. There's so many, so many things we can grow here and preserve and feed our families. Um, but it, it's, it takes a lot of work and we right. need to help each other. Hey y'all, Charity here. Thanks so much for checking out this conversation between Stevie from Harlow House Homestead and I. We really enjoyed it. And our goal in all of this is for you to start community right where you are. So in the description, I'll have kind of a little outline of the different things that she had done, things that I found success in. And I would love for you to comment below in the comment section and let us know what area you're in. In that comment section, you might find one, two, five, ten other people from the same area that you're in that you could connect with, that you could link up with, and you might be able to start something similar in your area. The goal of all of this is for us to continue to invest in our communities right where we are to help each other grow and to help us all succeed and thrive. And I hope that you've been inspired to do so from this video and this conversation. And I look forward to talking to you soon and seeing all the ways that you are making your community thrive. If you have suggestions of other things that you found success with in your community, doing the same thing, please leave them below and let us know. And maybe we can find inspiration from you also. Make it a great day and happy growing friends.